Okay, Amy, you're now live. Okay, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Advisory Design Panel on Thursday, July 8th. I'd like to start off by acknowledging that this meeting is being held on Squamish Nation traditional territory. Um, I'll start first by doing a quick roll call. I think I see a few people. Uh, we've got Kareem. Yeah. Uh, Julian. Hello. Yeah. No. Uh, Christina. No. Sarah. No. Catherine. No. Carlos. I see. I saw Carlos. I saw him. He was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll swing back and maybe Carlos will join again. Uh, Barzin, don't see Barzin. Uh, Amy, see Amy. Right. Uh, Luke, no Luke. Brent, we got Brent there. Yep. And myself. Uh, no one I'm missing. Um, I think Carlos is coming back on now, so I'll, I'll say Carlos is here. Okay, um, next I'll just read out a quick uh, procedure um, for electric, electronic participation meeting. Uh, please be aware committee members attending the meeting electronically are required to advise the chair of the meeting of the following circumstances. When the committee member disconnects or reconnects, so that this can be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Uh, B, committee members are to identify themselves when they advise the chair that they wish to be placed on the speakers list. C, with respect to a vote, please remember committee members are only required to state a nay vote. No statement is required if the member is in favor. D, committee members shall put the phone or computer on mic unless they wish to speak. E, committee members shall be involved and participate in the meeting. F, committee members shall text the chief administrative officer or the corporate officer, but I guess that's just someone at the district here, um, if they have trouble connecting, and I believe they'll put a phone number up in the um, chat uh, portal there. Uh, and G, the meeting shall be recessed for up to 10 minutes if technical difficulty occurs on the district side, which results in the committee member being unable to be connected to the meeting. Okay, um, I'll just loop back quickly because I see Barzin's joined. So I'll note you as present. Okay, um, just moving then on to the Agenda, uh, so number two, adoption of the agenda. Can I have someone move to adopt the agenda, please? Okay, Kareem, and then seconded by Brent. Okay, thanks. Uh, item three, uh, where the previous minute, minute meetings of advisory design panel on May 20th. Um, is there any discussion or any amendments anyone would like to make to those minutes? Nope. Okay. Um, could I please have someone move to adopt those minutes? Anyone? Kareem, thanks. Uh, second. Don't be shy. <laughs> Julian. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay, and then on to the, the only item of business today then um, is DP 566, uh, 1450 Highway 99. Um, I'd like to hand over to the planner, Brian Daly, to introduce the project. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the project today is development permit number 556, or 566 sorry, uh, as you know, located at uh, 1450 Highway 99. It's a 1.75 hectare site uh, zoned light industrial and is located on the west side of Highway 99, immediately south of the Shell gas station. Uh, the development permit application seeks to allow for the construction of 5,441 square meters of light industrial space. Uh, the subject property is developed with an older industrial building at the southern end of the property. The remainder of the lot has been cleared but remains undeveloped and is being used for staging of industrial equipment. The site is accessed from Mill Road uh, East corner of the property is subject to environmental setbacks from a wetland that is located partially on the subject property and partially within the Highway 99 right of way. The environmental setback is illustrated by a black and yellow line on the site plan 
Um, the project is proposing 102 parking stalls, uh, which exceeds the 98 stall requirement. Um, otherwise, the, the project meets the zoning bylaw. It is uh, less in height than is allowed in the zone. It is nine. Sorry, 9.6 meters. And hey, Brian, sorry to interrupt, but do you mind speaking up a little bit? We're just having trouble hearing you. Sorry, is this better? Much better. Thank you. Yeah, okay, did, did you want me, were you guys able to kind of hear what I just said, or did you want me to take it from the top? I was able to hear fine. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so each building, uh, it, the site plan, or it consists of three buildings. Um, the site plan appears to show two buildings. However, the long building is actually comprised of two buildings with a four hour firewall. Each building is 9.6 meters in height, which is lower than the 10.6 meter maximum allowable in the zoning. Proposed lot coverage is 31.15%. Uh, the base building color is pearly white with a variety of colorful panels. Um, staff had suggested that the base building color be a darker color, such as a brown or green, with lighter accents to help blend the buildings into the surrounding landscape. It was also suggested that each building have a different base color to help differentiate between the buildings. Uh, this would create a more unique looking industrial development, which would be appropriate given the property's location to Highway 99 and the entrance to Squamish. Uh, the proponent disagreed with this suggestion, citing concerns regarding decreased visual interest from the highway, and they responded by increase, increasing the variety of accent colors used and use them more uh, prominently along the building faces. Um, and landscaping consists of native and drought resistance plantings, and there are substantial plantings along the eastern property line to help screen the development from Highway 99. So that will, concludes my short intro, and I will pass it off to the architect, uh, Craig Mitchell. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I think I'm permitted to share a screen. Um, and first of all, can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of sharing screen. Is it visible now to everyone? Yep. Yep. Okay. So um, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Craig Mitchell, with Craig Mitchell Architecture and Design. And we were retained by Pacific, Pacific Capital Real Estate Group um, to do uh, a light industrial building uh, at 1451, or sorry, 1450, I have it as Mill Road here, but it's Highway 99, so happy to change that. Um, as Brian had mentioned, the location of this project is along Highway 99. Um, it's accessed off of Mill Road. Um, to the west side, it, it exists to the west side of Highway 99, and, and on the uh, west side of the property, there's the CN Railroad tracks. Um, <clears throat> on the east side, there's a residential community on the east side of Highway 99, and the um, local hospital is also accessed from that location. Um, on the north side, as Brian mentioned, there's a gas station, and on the south side and higher up above is uh, a community church. And also on the west side, like west on the west side of the CN railroad tracks is another residential community. And then kind of separating the highway and the south part of the site, there's a couple of forested areas. And as Brian mentioned, along the northeast corner, um, in the corner where Mill Road and um, Highway 99 is, there's uh, a specially protected environmental area. And we've been um, complying with the setbacks and the requests of um, environmental environmental planner for that area. Uh, previously, this site was historically used for the logging industry, um, which has actually contributed to some of the challenges working with this site. Um, in that there, there's a, a heavy heavy level of or layer of organics and wood waste and bark stripping that's been distributed over the site. Um, and it's, it's kind of created some challenges in terms of how we address it with cut and fill and with how we support the proposed buildings. So this map here might, as an aerial view, might more clearly identify a few of the things that we were just talking about with, with the uh, Highway 99 and the residential neighborhood to the east of that highway and with access to the hospital also on the east side. 
um, the environmental area that's on the northeast, northwest or northeast corner of our site, just off of Mill Road and Highway 99. Uh, the gas station, which is right across the street. Um, the CN rail line is identified there with the new residential neighborhood um, to the west of that. And then a community church, which is at a higher elevation up along Highway 99 and south of the property. Um, one of the things that's key to um, kind of acknowledge from this, or you won't necessarily see it in this aerial diagram, is that from the north part of the Highway 99 is much lower than the south side um, up by the community church. So this proposed project is actually nestled kind of in a lower area um, along a good portion of the highway, which kind of makes it lower than the highway which we can show in some site sections later on. Um, the colors and materials that we've used for, or the materials palette and colors for this project are basically inspired by Squamish itself. Um, we wanted to use a white backdrop on the building so that we could better feature uh, some of the colors that we see in the natural environment. And we're choosing blues and greens and grays as kind of the most prominent ones. Um, we've introduced uh, another wood feature at the main entrances to each of the units. Um, the main entrance has this, this warm wood quality to it that runs vertically up the side of the panel and then transitions into the soffit. Um, so it creates a nice warm entrance feel. Um, all of the office entrances or what we're proposing, the entrances to the, the units um, has lots of ample glazing to permit access to natural light. Some more detailed site plan um, where we have a bunch of the site statistics on there. We identify kind of the site in, in a similar context plan to the one that I'd previously shown you. And then the actual site plan where we identify building one, building two, and building three. Um, it's funny, building one south and building, I guess, yeah. We have south and north identified for building one and building or, or for building one and for building two because of the amount of stepping. So the buildings step in order to um, kind of meet with the constraints of the, the property and the property line and what we were requested to do to um, comply with um, the environmental requests in the, I'll call it a riparian area, which I believe is, is how it's identified in the Northeast corner. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've incorporated quite a bit of landscape and the landscaping along that riparian area includes for a, a lot of bouldering as opposed to other types and forms of retaining walls so that it can um, conform a bit more to the natural environment than other means of um, doing retaining walls. So this is just a view of what the project would look like if you're in the middle of the site and looking towards the south. Um, you can see some of the, the warm entrance canopies with uh, the, the wood finish or the wood appearance material at the entrances. You can see a, a lot of the ample glazing. Um, you can see the buildings stepping um, at the south end of the property. You can see that we're providing for um, articulated facades um, and opportunities for signage. It's another image which is further back from the north end as you'd be pulling in from off of Mill Road. And similarly, you'd be able to drive by and be able to get some of the same stepping appearance of the, of the buildings. Um, at the front, at the north end here, as you drive onto the site, the, the entrance of the building appears to be closer before it starts to step back um, to the other buildings further down. And then this image is from the south end of the parking lot looking north. 
Um, this would probably look towards like the gas station and I guess Brackendale Mountains towards the other side to the northwest. But similarly, this is the effect that you would have from looking down the site. Now, I'm not sure if our landscape architect uh, managed to make it on. I know that she was having some difficulty. Oh, my goodness. Can you hear me? Um, I can hear somebody. Yeah, I am here. If you can hear me. Jessica, hi. Hi. Okay, I just opened up L1. Yes, I, I can see it actually. Thanks, okay. Craig. Um, hello, everyone. I would like to take you around this um, site quickly. Um, I'd like to highlight in the site, you can see, um, Craig, could you flip to the next slide, please, so we can get a closer view. Thank you, Craig. You're welcome. Um, so as Craig has mentioned, um, he's sort of given us an overview of the site already, but um, in the areas along this spia, um, we've tried to incorporate a lot of native planting that's similar in character um, to what the environmental consultant is using in the environmental area. And we've also chosen to um, do any retention necessary along that side of the site with boulders rather than uh, another material for the retaining wall, just to help it um, blend in um, with the environmental area and also with the character of the um, of the geographical area. Um, along that, um, Bia, we've also included for a, a split rail fence which will um, which will blend in with that naturalized area and also provide a bit of a barrier for um, to keep uh, the pedestrian traffic out of the environmental area. Um, maybe we could flip to the next one, Craig, just to kind of go through the site. Um, So again, in this area, we've provided um, planting along the perimeter of the site, bordering with the spia, and then also bordering with the naturalized area that is between the site and the highway. Um, and also provided some landscaping within the parking lot to soften and uh, uh, green up that area. Then maybe one more, Craig. And then on the south end of the site here, um, this is just sort of illustrating, we've provided landscaping all along the perimeter of the site here. Uh, we've screened those garbage enclosures. Um, and we're also just sort of giving a bit of an idea. There is a lot of existing um, trees and shrubs. It's kind of quite densely forested around the south and east sides of the site. Um, and so all of that is being retained as it is. Um, also, within our landscape plans, we have um, made sure to keep the species uh, to be bear aware, and so our species are not attract attractants, rather, to wildlife. Um, and we have used as much uh, native uh, and drought-resistant planting material um, as is suitable to the project. I think that covers the landscaping. Okay, thanks, Jessica. Thank you. So I mentioned that there's a um, transition from uh, Mill Road uh, up to the south part of the highway where the topography of the, the landscape changes quite dramatically. In section one here in our cross section, we can see that our buildings one and three are a little bit higher than potentially where the highway is. 
And then as we get to section two, you see that there's a bit of a transition where we're actually becoming a little bit uh, more on, on an even level with uh, where the highway is. And we can see that the highway is rising up such that it's almost at the top of the building. And then when we look at the longer sections here for building one and building two, we can see that because of the stepping of the building, we end up with something which goes, evolves from an elevation into a section cut. But then at the south end of the property, you can see where the landscape is actually kind of at the same height as the building and where we have to use retaining walls because of the cut and fill that's happening at the south end of that site. Um, similarly here, we're cutting through uh, buildings three and building one ends up for whatever reason, not really showing up as an elevation. Oh, it ends up being behind and we cut through, through building three here. But again, you can see where the uh, garbage and recycling enclosures are with the retaining wall, the height of the landscape on the south end of the site and the transition to the north end of the site where building one is where we're at a reasonable grade there. Um, is anyone interested in going through the floor plans or the elevations or have we got enough to have a conversation? I would say it would be benefit just look at those uh, blocks of the elevations, not necessarily the floor plans, unless anyone sure. objects. Okay, so elevations for building one. So the elevations, they have front entrances as well as grade dock doors. So these are like small bay warehousing. I'm sorry, I interrupted somebody, go ahead. No, well, that was me. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so the elevations show that we have front bay loading uh, as well as front entrances. We're showing that we have, um, these wood feature panels uh, with a soffit above. Um, these are the colored panels that we think uh, represent um, the color palette that we're seeing in Squamish. Uh, we've provided for light fixtures at all of the front entrances. Uh, we were requested to make um, the elevations that um, face the, the highway, Highway 99 appear to be front. So uh, while we don't have entrances there, we have exiting for the units, we have included for some higher level glazing, which would seem to work well with uh, the site as the site slopes up to give these an, a, a feel of being entrances as well. And then similarly along the north and south elevations, on the south elevation, we're showing the difference in the stepping of the building as it steps uh, back um, as it conforms to the site conditions along the east side. And the elevation number four here for the north uh, kind of shows where we've got uh, access to um, an, an overhead door from the parking on the north side, and then the building steps back um, towards grid line A. And these are the elements for grid line three. So um, a lot of mix of, of colors um, gives the building some height in terms of uh, how we're trying to accentuate something, which um, these, these buildings are long and low. And in an attempt to give them some stature and some elegance, the vertical stripes, I think, make the building appear to be taller than what it is. Um, and again, we can see the wood features that we have at the entrances to each of the units.
Is there anything else? No, that's fine if, uh, if you're good with that. Yeah, we're, I'm, I think, um, I, I think we've pretty much covered the elevations and the, the site and the building, so. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Craig. Um, in that case, then we will, um, and Jessica, sorry, and we'll move to questions. Um, I'll start first with um, Kareem, please. Yes, hi. Uh, thanks, Craig, for the presentation. A uh, couple of quick questions. Uh, what, are, what are the primary uses, um, just out of curiosity? So the proposed uses would be small bay warehousing, uh, perhaps distribution with a, a small office component for the users. Okay, um, uh, if, if you may go back to the perspectives, um, I was just curious about the, um, yeah, any of these uh, on the left there. So is, is, is this gonna be all asphalt, the, 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 the sort of gray, the paving there? Um, yes, we're proposing that there's asphalt. Um, there's, there's sidewalk in front of the units. So because of the, because there's the overhead doors, um, if I take you to um, site plan here. So we have concrete sidewalk in front of the entrance units where the parking stalls are. You can see parking stall 11, 13, and 15. There's, um, there's there's the concrete sidewalks there, and then where the overhead doors are, we've just brought it down to asphalt to to meet with the um, the slab. Got it. And uh, final question: uh, What are the materials on the uh, elevation? Am, am I assuming this is uh, hardy, or uh, it looks like they're all uh, fiber cement panels, or? So the building itself, or we're proposing, is going to be uh, concrete tilt-up panels. Um, as I mentioned previously, with the amount of organic waste and debris um, that's that's on the site, we're having some difficulties with the weights of the proposed panels. So we're working right now with the contractor and with the engineer to try to reduce the weights of the panels such that they can be tilted or lifted into place. Um, but we may end up proposing um, something that is gonna have a similar appearance to a concrete tilt-up panel if we can't seem to reconcile um, the weights and loads of, of the panels themselves. Uh, we, we have no proposal for anything that's hardy panel. Um, the paint colors are, are paint on concrete. Uh, we have um, longboard proposed as the faux wood cladding um it's it's very durable and, and it's appropriate for an industrial setting um the other pet things that we we're showing there are like metal flashing and anodized aluminum so the metal flashing will be for uh openings and for the parapets and then the anodized aluminum would be for glazing got it thank you uh that's all for me david Okay, thanks, Kareem. Um, could I go to Julian for questions, please? Sure. Uh, thanks, Craig. Um, I uh, just tried to add up the length of the combined building one, building building one north, building one south, building two north, and building two south. So is it about two hundred meters ish? Um, that's a good question in terms of the length, but it, it looked to be a roughly about 200 meters. I, I kind of lost track of it. I, I think eight, I added it up and it was 663 feet, 202 meters. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's about 200 meters. Yeah. It's a long building. <laughs> okay. Um, what am I, what's the, what's the roof made of? Uh, we're proposing um, it's a membrane roof. Sorry, it's a, uh, what, sorry. It's it'll be a membrane roof, like a two ply um, SBI. 
two ply SPS or uh, ballasted EPDM. Okay, and that's what you would see if you were on the highway looking down. For a portion of it, as I said, the highway transitions, right? So at one end yeah. of the highway on the north side of the site, you would probably see no roof. And then as you got to a higher elevation, you would probably see some rooftop. Okay. Yeah. Um, the sidewalk sections in the parking bays, are they, is there a curb around those or are they flush? Can you repeat that? The sidewalk sections in the parking bay? A curb? Yeah, is there a curb around them or are they flush with the asphalt? No, we're intending for there to be a, a, a smaller curb with, and the, the sidewalks are going to slope away. Um, but yeah, there, there would be a curb. Okay. Yeah. Um, here, for instance, we would, for the handicap, there would be yeah. a lift down so that, you know, there's accessibility there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That was, that was what I was getting at. Um, I think I'm probably pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Julian. Um, could I go to Carlos next? Thanks. Can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Great. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I guess my first question is, you know, I noticed your design vehicles. If I'm thinking of warehouse and storage, I would imagine that you, you the deliveries typically within the warehouse are coming from like a WB-15, WB-20, and then getting transferred to like the LSU or the SU-30. Is, am, am I not correct in that? Are you able to, is this functional? Like, is this functional as designed for, for shipping and receiving? These aren't for articulated vehicles. These are for like cube vans, is the warehousing and distribution for, for these units. Right. Like so, and like so it has to be you, you nine, or or was that? Uh, did you do? It just wasn't wasn't part of the initial design criteria. Well, the site wouldn't actually support having articulated vehicles on it. The building sizes would be reduced such that your site coverage would make it uh, pretty tough to be economical because the building units would be so small. Right. That's why we're proposing small bay distribution and warehousing with small office. Okay. Uh, can, can you maybe share with us any other configurations that you tried and, and they didn't work? I'm thinking specifically about um, like shifting building two south further towards the highway uh, to remove that kind of parking lot in the back. Or did you even explore any options to, to build the building and have that act as a retaining structure? Up against the, I guess it would be the project south end of the site. So, no, I wasn't prepared to provide you with alternatives uh, to what we had submitted for the development permit application. Um, but what we are showing there is a, a hatch diagram that um, is basically the fire truck access. Um, and obviously, the fire truck access thing might change, but then the buildings would potentially change as well along the edge of building two. Um, in terms of having worked with, um, I'll call them the leasing agent or realtor, is that this is the market that they were proposing this, this project be for. Um, at one point, rather than having three buildings, with building one and building two being separated by firewalls. We had proposed one larger building. Um, and in terms of responses from initial discussions with planning, um, we ended up uh, making these adjustments such that it is three buildings as they appear today. Um, so we did go through alternate exercises and the building areas did get reduced. And now we're at a site coverage of about 31%. Okay, thanks for that. Um, are there any requirements for continuous cover? I know that we've, we've pushed for that in other industrial parks in Squamish uh, as far as the pedestrian level. For continuous canopies? Correct. 
Um, not that we're aware of. No one has made any mention or requirement for us to do that. Okay. And just so to kind of follow up on Julian's question, the as you've designed it, there will only be a certain number of buildings that will be accessible via a ramp, and those are indicated in that line hatch on your plan. Um, no, I mean, if, if I, I might be mistaken in terms of how the, the concrete edge is formed on the asphalt. Um, it could be that it is flush with the asphalt, but when you look at 18 and the handicapped parking, you know, it would suggest that it's either flush or that we're providing for a letdown, but all units have to be accessible. So we would have to make that accommodation anyways. Right. Okay, that's all the questions I've got. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks, Carlos. Um, Arzen? Yes, thank you, Greg, for your presentation. Uh, I had a question from Brian. Is there any variance requested for this project? Uh, no, there are no no variances to the zoning bylaw requested for this project. Okay, thank you. And uh, did you consider any other colors, Greg, other than the blue and green that they mentioned, the gray, or as the or that's no. That's not... We had proposed um, some other colors at one point, but then we ended up um, refining and editing them to these ones that we. Thought were a good reflection of the natural environment for Squamish. And uh, did you consider, uh, because I can see that some of the buildings have different depth, uh, can you adjust them so it doesn't seem that long, uh, about 200 meter long uh, for building three and part of building one and two? Can you shift them so it doesn't look such a big, huge mess? So buildings one and two have a considerable amount of stepping as they adapt and adjust to the site. How much? I'm not really sure what we could do to building three because the oh, amount of site coverage and usable um, warehousing distribution space is kind of greatly reduced as it already is. Okay. Um, and how much is the height difference between these units? Roughly. Between building one and two, or between no, building one and three? Between one and two, let's see. It's fairly nominal. It looks like the parapet heights are about the same between one and three. So about three feet. The parapet height is three foot high. It's about three, three feet. feet. Yes. Okay, and uh, you mentioned about the fire truck access. Is it? Can you show me in the plan how it works? So the fire truck access is the hatch line. Right, and then we've labeled as fire truck access. Uh huh. And then how do they turn around? Okay, so we're permitted to have a hammerhead condition. They can come in, they can back right in, and then back out again. Okay, so that's basically like a dead end for I don't know how long, but part of it is that. And all these parkings are considered some of them like a loading bay or how the truck, the bigger truck, oh, some of them are bigger, right? Okay, so like I was saying before, the the size of the loading trucks, um, they're basically, you can only use like cube van size vehicles in here. You can't use articulated trucks. It doesn't work for that. And that's not the uh, pro forma that the leasing aging agent has, um, has done their evaluation or assessment on. Um, so these are like, you know, small cube vans. Um, Five ton trucks. Yeah. Okay. And the parking spaces are the ones that have the wheel stops. And then the longer ones would be where the overhead doors are to each of the units. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all on the question. 
Oh, you're welcome. Hey, thanks, Harzan. Um, Amy? Hi, um, all of my questions have actually been answered. Okay, perfect. Um, Brent? Yeah, it's great. Uh, thanks, Craig, for the presentation. I have a question for Brian, for staff. Um, the temporary the gate that is across the rail line at Mill Road, just wondering what the future plans are from, I guess, the district, if there's any plans for pedestrian access or anything else as CS guys built out. Uh, so my understanding as uh, having processed the subdivision application is that is temporary fire access until the Pemberton Road is built down or the Laurel Wood Road is connected to Pemberton, at which time the berm, a, a berm is going to have to be built and there won't be uh, pedestrian access across there. I doubt that would be something that CM would, yeah, as it would be an uncontrolled crossing. But no, the yeah, the, the plan would be for that to be totally closed to pedestrians in the future. Okay. Uh, and then I had a question for Craig and kind of pedestrian circulation uh, within the parking lot. If there's any thoughts or considerations for a continuous walkway uh, in the interior of the, I guess, these buildings. So we, we don't have a proposal for an interior walkway. We have one around the back of the site which is, you know, for the purposes of exiting and making sure that, you know, people can exit that end of this, uh, the edge of the sites for building one and building two and building three, that's all on the west side. Um, the access is, the, the concrete access and the, the canopies are really in front of the units themselves. Um, so in terms of pedestrian walkway, um, we haven't provided for anything. I mean, there's some small opportunities for like a smaller sidewalk, maybe along this landscaped edge here. Um, our bicycle parking and our mailbox kiosks are at the front entrance. So um, along with, you know, the proposed signage for the site that helps identify it. Uh, we weren't thinking that we needed to put too much over in by the riparian or specially protected area, because that's a place where we'd want to discourage people from walking in the first place. But all of the pedestrian access is really only for the, the units themselves. Okay, so and I guess the, the parking that's at the north end and the south end of the site, uh, the intent then would be people would just walk through the parking lot and uh, fire access to access whichever unit they're going to. Yes, that's what's being proposed. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Um, myself, um, just looking at the site plan here, I noticed in the sections that you are showing significant retaining, but there's nothing shown on the plan. Is there a, a miss there or is it, am I missing it? You mean on this site plan? Yeah. So we are identifying retaining wall along yeah. here. It's maybe it's the scale of the site plan itself, but we do bring up a note that says that we're going to have a retaining wall um, and it transitions the whole way around. To about here. Okay. But in one of your sections, it looked like that had maybe seven or eight tiers that was 30 feet high. So you're referring to this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so in order to make this somewhat economical in terms of material use, we're stepping the retaining wall um, as reasonably as we can. Um, and here, you know, that's, that's great. And that line there would be the, the top of the wall across there. So, yeah, I mean, there, there are extensive retaining walls in order to make this property work, um, because the south side um, does change so drastically with the topography. Okay. 
and that hasn't been shown in landscaping drawings how that's going to be treated or, or planted or or dealt with. Um, I'm just opening up Jessica's drawing here. So this area up here, the plan is that it's not really going to be touched. It's going to be left as natural as possible. Okay. And then at the lower side of the wall is where she's proposing a buffer of planting in front of the retaining wall. Okay. I, I, I'm still not clear how the, the section and the plan relate because it seems to show seven or eight tiers, yet the plan shows a single eight inch wide wall. But maybe yes. We don't so, need to dwell on it. Yeah, for a development permit at the scale that we're working at right now for the site plan, like uh, showing each level of step, we didn't necessarily think that that was going to be important, but you can see that the site kind of, or the, the retaining wall kind of transitions in lots of different ways. And it's gonna yeah. take a considerable amount of design effort in order to uh, design every aspect of that retaining wall. Can I chime in quickly here? Yeah. I think um, the section that you guys were just looking at is a little bit deceiving, but the retaining wall is not tiered. It is stepped to follow the natural grade um, and retain as we need it. But it's not actually, there's no tiers in the retaining wall. It's a, it's a sectional elevation. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I, I see where it's looking like there's tiers, but there are, there are not. It is just one just, wall. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So it's one wall that steps um, as per the topography. Okay. Um, there's a unique circular tower building on the site with the kind of logging and the site's got some logging history, which you touched on. Was there any interest in having that influence in the, the build or any reference to that? Um, there was a conversation about it um, very early on and there was an assessment that was done. Um, and that particular building is, uh, can I say dust traps? <laughs> um, I, I would suggest that if, if Squamish had value in it, they might negotiate um, taking it away maybe. Um, but it's the kind of building that would have to be demolished just for safety purposes. And it would probably, I would consider it unrealistic uh, to have the developer invest the time, money and effort to rebuild it. Because the whole thing would, would need to be rebuilt. Okay. Um, just some of the policy policy context, you know, taking a deeper dive into the DPA3 and DPA, I mean, this is such a prominent site. How, how does this design reflect and celebrate what's special about Squamish in your, in your eyes? Well, that's a good question. Um, it incorpor like I said, is it incorporates what I think are a lot of the natural colors and, and beauty of the surrounding environment of Squamish. Um, you know, we've integrated what we think are some durable and appropriate materials for uh, this type of development. Uh, we understand that Squamish is a growing community that has a need for these types of businesses and business buildings. Um, so we, we think it's a good fit overall. Okay. Um... Yeah, um, I think most of my other questions have been asked. Um, I think I'll just leave to comments afterwards. Um, yeah, was there any other questions from anybody before I move to comments? Take five. I have, I have no. a one. Oh, oh, Brent, yeah, sorry. Uh, Carlos, hey, Carlos. Carlos, you had one first. Yeah, oh, Carlos, first. sorry. Brett, I got a feeling you got maybe have the same question. So, um, 
you, you know, one of those guidelines is also creating a high quality public realm. Uh, and given, like, bro, I'm going to ask this question to staff. Given that this area is not really going to be that accessible by public, is that kind of does that provide some flexibility in that guideline and its interpretation? Yes, I would say that's fair. Obviously, it's going to be challenging for pedestrians to get to the site, so that was what was considered in DP guidelines and associated with this application. Perfect. Thank you. Brent, yeah, again, I'll, yeah, one other. I, I was going to ask about uh, sustainable design measures and what's being done to sort of uh, meet. It's also one of the the guidelines of use of sustainable goods, uh, low carbon recycled. Yeah. Materials. There's any plan so, for that. So the the materials that um, are being proposed for this development are the materials that are considered to probably be the most appropriate for industrial typologies that have uh, large trucks moving around and around the site. So, you know, concrete is highly durable. Uh, concrete has good capacity for thermal mass. Um, you know, the, the rooftop and what we use for roofing materials um, can be adaptive for a number of different conditions. Um, we don't really have to concern ourselves too much as a northern climate um, with, with things that have high albedo or re reflectivity. In fact, it actually benefits us to have some absorption in terms of roof materials. Um, you know, in terms of access to natural light, we're including for glazing and, and lots of glazing on the office sides, both at an upper level and at a lower level. And to address the idea of having um, the side that faces Highway 99, appear to be as a front facade. We've introduced additional natural light and glazing there as well. Okay. Okay, thanks, Brent. And I just like to ask one, uh, sorry, additional question to staff. Were there any requests by the applicants for, uh, for rezoning or did the district suggest any rezoning to this area? Uh, no, there was no request for rezoning, I believe. Let me just make double check so that I'm not incorrect, but I believe the land use designation for this property is heavy industrial or intensive industrial or no, it's industrial business. So uh, no, there was no no request for rezoning, but it is in line with the uh, land use designation. And uh, given the shortage of light industrial zoned land in town, there was no suggestion made to change the zoning. Okay. Thanks. Uh, anyone else before I go to comment? Yep. I, 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 uh, can I jump in? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I got disconnected for a minute or two, so I just wanted to note that in, but I, I reconnected right away. Um, the, the, the second question, uh, was for Brian, actually, uh, could you repeat in the beginning in your intro, you said, uh, something about advising the applicant about, uh, the elevations and they decided to, uh, do something else. Could you repeat that part? Uh, sure. Uh, the, it was just more of a suggestion to use a uh, darker, a, a different base color of the buildings to try and differentiate between the buildings. Uh, and a suggestion was made to use a darker color, such as a brown or gray with lighter accents. However, um, the proponent uh, brought up that the, that suggestion caused concerns regarding decreased visual interest from the highway. And their response was to increase the variety of accent colors and use them more prominently along the building faces. And uh, uh, Brian, in terms of uh, light industrial use, uh, does that include uh, things like uh, breweries and, and, you know, will there be, be a, a public, uh, you know, like public, public uh, sort of uses? Alcohol beverage manufacturing is a permitted use in, in Iwan. Um, light industrial is a permitted use. Uh, which covers obviously quite a broad spectrum of uses that would fall into there. Um, so there, there is a potential for some uh, public or, you know, uses that would draw pedestrians, but uh, ultimately it would be up to the uh, future landlord to decide which uses they want to put into this building. Okay, thank you. 
<laughs> okay, thanks. Um, well, if so, we could just sorry, David. Yeah, I'm yeah. oh, sorry. I got one more question. <laughs> sorry about that. Can, can we just? I, I just want to look at the the northern end of the site uh, against the what you're calling the riparian area. What is the height difference between that edge and the riparian area? You're talking in this area here. Sorry, I'm on mobile, and this is. Yeah, so where you got the parking lot, and you said there's going to be a retaining wall structure that I think you said you're going to use boulders or some natural material. Yeah, right here. Wall. Yeah, what's what's that elevation? What's that grade difference? So we're showing some differences in elevations here of 4.6 and 5.2. And then our building elevation will be on our floor plans. Or at least I'm looking for our finished floor elevation. Mm -hmm. But I mean, overall, the difference in the grade of this site is about 1.7 meters. I'm not picking it up here, but there's about a two meter difference between Like here we're having to include four guardrails along the retaining wall because the difference in height is, well, it's over two meters. Okay, perfect. In some Thank of you. Those yeah. You're welcome. Okay, anyone for anyone? Going one. No, okay, perfect. Uh, comments, uh, could we jump to Kareem, please? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so I've got a I've got a, a number of comments here. Um, uh, this is a, a prominent site, and and uh, and I and I wonder if uh, the applicant had a chance to. This is right across uh, the street, the CN Rail and Laurelwood from the new CN Sky development. Um, and I wonder if you, uh, you know, I'm assuming you visited the site and you saw sort of the architecture that's uh, that's going up there in terms of, uh, you know, forming character in terms of materials, uh, their use of, uh, uh, you know, corrugated metal and colors and so on. Um, is this, uh, you know, I, I understand uh, fully that this is a, a different typology and, and uh, it comes with its own, um, you, you know, like you mentioned, pro forma and, and, and sort of business business case. But at the same time, uh, it's a highly visible location. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's right before you enter Squamish. It's, uh, it's right across from this uh, huge development. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful location because you're, you, you, in terms of your, your views to the chief and, and mountains and so on. Um, so this is uh, the 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 sort of the first comment is about materials and 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 elevation. There, uh, I, I I see that you you know there was uh, an attempt to uh, in, you know articulate the facades a little bit and and introduce you know different heights and so on. But to me, it seems a little relentless and and it's sort of repetitive. Um, uh, and maybe it has to do with the length of the building, uh, despite your attempts at, at breaking it up, it, it just seems really long and, and repetitive. Um, I wonder if introducing uh, a second or third, and, you know, this is going to be concrete and it's going to be painted concrete, but if you introduce uh, uh, another material in addition to the long board that's going to be at your entry, and, uh, at your entry, um, maybe uh, introduce some metal, uh, or, which is, is durable, and, and it goes well with uh, sort of the industrial typology, and it will uh, sort of make the project uh, mesh better with 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 the big, huge development that's going to be right behind you. Um, so this is uh, a suggestion. Uh, 
in terms of the length of the building, I am a little concerned about, uh, other than the fact that the buildings are really long, and, and I already mentioned this, uh, I don't think in terms of fire access, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be allowed. I, I suggest if you haven't already to have a, a discussion with the fire chief, because by code, you're only allowed a, a 90 meter uh, dead end. And, you know, until you get to your hammerhead, it's a lot longer than 90 meters, if I understand correctly. Um, so maybe one option is to introduce the hammerhead sooner, and it will break, I believe it would be building uh, the building to the uh, west, uh, the building that's by itself. Um, and, and, and maybe that will help you, or, or maybe it's on the other side, and it will help you break your building by introducing a sort of a break and, and, and have a little hammerhead there. Because I don't think you're, this will fly, to be honest with you. I might be wrong. But I don't. I don't think uh, this this uh, uh, this uh, sort of abides by code. Um, this brings me to uh, again the uh, the extensive uh, asphalt use, and it's it's also a little relentless. Like, um, and this is why I asked the question about about if there's going to be uh, breweries, and you know we're seeing it. Uh, you know, pop up here in, in Vancouver where you have these sort of industrial kitchens and they have little um, little windows that they sell out of. Uh, I was just visiting Beta 5, if, if, if anyone's aware of it, here in, in, in um, on Terminal uh, or the industrial area by Terminal. And it, it, it's exactly like this where you, you don't know where to park to, to grab your, you, you have to park in, in the Arcade, but or the parking area, but then you're walking where cars are moving to grab your treats that you you bought, and it's very unfriendly. Um, and if you know, obviously this is a question also to the to to staff is you know if if uses are permitted that will allow that will you know require public to go whether it's. Uh, you know, uh, industrial kitchens or 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 breweries or so on. Maybe the the, the, the we can take a, a, some of the asphalt and turn it into paving, and 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 then it would be dedicated for um, you know seating areas or or if they don't require it all the. I see that uh, I understand they have excess parking that is required. Maybe some of it can be taken away and could be converted into seating areas or planted areas just to break up that big sea of, of asphalt. Um, yeah, I think, I think th this, this is, this is uh, it for me. I'll leave it here. Uh, but thanks again for your presentation. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Kareem. Uh, Julian. Um, thanks, David. Uh, thanks, Craig. Um, Kareem mentioned a, a word a couple of times there, which I think is very fitting, uh, and that word was relentless. <laughs> um, so I think these buildings actually create street walls, um, and as such, I think they need more articulation to to break them up. Um, I I like the colours that you've chosen. You know, colours are a very subjective thing, um, but I do like the colours that you've chosen, and I, I like the rationale behind it. Um, I'm not sure that white as a background color is appropriate. Um, interestingly, one of your, um, I think it's one of your end elevations, your south elevation, well, uh, building three, um, I know it's just a tone that's on the, on, the, um, on the drawing there, but as a kind of gray tone, I think that's a, a lot more successful. Um, but I would like to see them broken up more so that there isn't really, you kind of lose the sense that there's a background color I think that would help. I think having that idea that there's a background color and foreground colors is part of the problem, that it, it starts to feel too kind of homogenous and you start to read the kind of uh, the patterning. And I think if you if you kind of broke up the background color more in some of these bigger panels, uh, you would get that kind of fragmentation a bit more. Um, so, some of the, sorry, some of the things on the planting um i think the native species choices great uh there's a couple of weird ones in there um your spacing for the plants uh worried me a little bit number three containers at one meter spacing is very sparse 
Um, and I think you're going to have maintenance issues because that will allow weeds to colonize very quickly, or you're going to spend a lot of money maintaining this thing. So I tighten up that spacing if you could. Um, I'd also think about removing a couple of parking bays um, to break up that huge mass of, it's a sea of asphalt. You know, there's no other way of describing it. It's a sea of asphalt. <laughs> Um, and I get it, you know, there are budgetary constraints and, you know, pavers and things like that are expensive, but any way that you could break that up, I think would be good. I think you're a couple of parking spaces over. So I think you could maybe afford to lose a couple and they turn into, uh, planting areas and get some trees in there to break up that kind of whole central area. Um, I would just like to check because I've seen a number of new developments in Squamish where, uh, visibility splays haven't been properly assessed on corners that large shrub plants aren't used on corners. So it doesn't block those, those views, uh, as you're going around the corner, um, the roof material, uh, I think that's important. Um, I think from a, a sustainability perspective, um, you know, again, a huge area of potential to apply SBS is seems like a bit of a wasted opportunity and maybe there's an opportunity, not specifically for green roofs, because I, again, I know there's a cost associated with those, but you know, there are creative solutions where things like brown roofs could be used, um, that encourage colonization of native species, um, and have minimal cost implication. Um, the retaining walls seem somewhat problematic to me, uh, the height, um, and again, that kind of lack of articulation in the retaining walls. Obviously, I'd like to see some planting on those retaining walls, if at all possible. Um, and some kind of treatment that really does break down the scale a little bit, um, because I think it's, it's quite inhuman right now. Um, I agree with Kareem about the fire truck access. It looks a little bit long to me. Um, but, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thanks, Julian. Uh, does Carlos next, please? Yeah, th thank you, David. Thanks, Craig. Um, so I'm, I'm a bit conflicted with this. Uh, I am a huge proponent and supporter of the like, industrial expansion and the creation of jobs in our community. Uh, and I do acknowledge that you've got a tough site uh, with some, some soil conditions that you need to contend with and that you're probably achieving a lower if they are allowable, and that's always tough to swallow from the, the owner side. Um, but I, I will say it's, you know, I, I've got, if I go on your, on the website for the PCRE and, and the kind of advertisement for this, this site, you know, it, it speaks to two things that I think we should highlight, which is it's, it's opportunity for logistics and, and it's absolutely right. It's right off highway 99. Um, I, I, I would really encourage you to look at trying to get access for bigger trucks in here, because I think that's going to be critical for the uses, uh, and that it, and I'll use the language here, um, provide a much needed space for a variety of local businesses to support valuable jobs in the community. And, and that's the part that when I look at the zoning bylaw and what's permitted under the current light industrial zone, it does give me pause because, you know, in, in with logistics and shipping, we're also, we also have. Uh, you know, a whole other suite of uses that we've seen in our industrial park, including breweries and fitness centers and, uh, you know, alcoholic beverage manufacturing with accessory uses. So, um, I, I think that that's, if, if I'm leasing this up, that's going to be my highest and best use for a portion of this. And I'll, I'll do as much as I can until the parking runs out. And so that's, that's something that we needs to be considered, uh, to some degree. And, and then going back to my colleague on the panel's comments, you know, this, this is in a, uh, a very prominent space as you enter the community. Um, and I, I think that there just needs to be a bit more attention paid to the form and character of, of this exterior, uh, and kind of aligning with, with the values that we're starting to push this community towards. So, uh, uh I do appreciate the effort. I think there needs to be a bit more done. Thanks. Thanks. Carol. Uh, can you go to then, please? Hi, thank you again. Um, I wish I could have a, a view or elevation from the highway for the project 
fairly complex. It looks like me from what I see that it's actually the back of the building that you see from highway. Uh, and it needs, I think it, it begs for opportunity to have more vibrant and more articulated design, especially at the, uh, I would say, east side. Um, yeah, the, the one on section four, that's the back of the building, I think. Um, that's what you see from highway, I suppose. Uh, I don't know what you see, uh, but uh, and I also am making it very short. I think the continuous pedestrian access cover uh, would be a plus. Also, as, as everybody mentioned, the, the truck access and the um, fire, fire truck. Uh, access and it needs to be looked at, uh, but that's that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Farzan. Uh, Amy. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, light industrial is something that's so needed in Squamish, and um, so definitely appreciate that being expanded. Um, as somebody who's here to represent public art, um, I don't really see maybe a need or um uh you know space or an incentive for that to exist here but i do agree that as a building seen so prominently as you enter in our um community more than other buildings that should be a consideration you know making it an appealing looking structure thanks okay thanks amy appreciate it uh brian yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks again, Craig. Uh, yeah, I want to echo the, the comments of my colleagues on the panel. Uh, I think that, you know, light industrial is, is important in Squamish, um, but with this site and sort of the, the prominence that it will play for a, an entrance piece to our community that uh, I think a little bit more work needs to be done. Uh, echo what Arson said, the pedestrian circulation of seeing what a lot of the light industrial buildings in town are currently used for and, and the activity that they see that like additional consideration needs to be made for pedestrian circulation. And, and if the more prominent buildings uh, maybe are more accessible buildings from a, a tenancy perspective or at the front of the, the, uh, the Project that thank you about access and truck access through that parking lot is uh, is critical. It's so kind of echoing what Carlos had said that uh, ensuring size of trucks and ease of turn and moving through this area, if that's one of the intended uses, um, that yeah should be potentially some more thought and consideration there. And, and I, I think kind of coming back to my CN rail access point question from uh, the previous round. I think that it's something that the district will need to think about as it's more for staff than for uh, you, Craig, but then the district will really need to think about how to control access and with the ever expanding um, sea and sky development and the future pedestrian bridge providing access from downtown. I could see there being scenarios where think of a, a new brewery in this like industrial area is going to attract people that want to walk and bike there and that that is something that should be explored to figure out what and how uh continuous access can be provided so that's all for me thank you okay thanks Brent. uh my comments um yeah Pretty much the same. I mean, um, there is a huge need for this. I recognize it's a tricky site, um, but with Red Bridge and Sea to Sky, this could become the, the easy place for people like that to go to a little brewery or something. And, you know, we've seen problems with patio seating and shade, and that's, that's these, those are going to be the tenants that are going to be excited to move into that place uh, if a logistic company can't get a truck in there. So there's this kind of half and half, you know, which one are you targeting? Um, I think DPA3 and DPA8 are always, well, DPA3 is always tricky, but when you add in DPA8, I mean, it really pushes it to a higher standard. And this, more than any site in Squamish, is a gateway into Squamish. It's basically, you'll see the chief and then you'll see this. Um, so, uh, I mean, yes, I, I believe, you know, the building doesn't, the building is too monotonous. 
we're meant to break it up as per the DPA guidelines, but at over 600 feet long, this will be the longest building in Squamish by a long shot. Um, and I think there just needs to be more effort put into, you know, rather than just painting rectangles on the concrete, whether there be raised materials, whether there be something that harkens to the, 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 the heritage of the site or makes some use in that. I think that for, for me, you know, to have a site that has logging history to kind of to try and uh, develop that or, or show that is actually a, a benefit to the developer as opposed to a constraint. Um, I'd also like to see it blend in, I think Kareem mentioned this, I'd like to see it kind of, you know, relate at least in some portion to the sea and sky development behind um, the white concrete, unfortunately, just doesn't do that for me. Um, the sea and sky development's been held up to a very high standard because it is such a prominent gateway site. And then this, this scene in front, I feel, should, you know, want, want to at least complement or exceed that. Um, uh, yeah, and, and just some of the language in DPA3 asking for a, you know, an attractive and cohesive first impression on Swarm, which I think unfortunately just hasn't been that. Um, uh, yeah, and just, yeah, it, it's an opportunity for the developer rather than a hindrance because this site will be synonymous with that developer for decades to come by hundreds of thousands of people who drive through this development. So it's a chance for that really to kind of be as prominent and shine as much as they want to. So, yeah, that's my comments. Um, does anyone have any further comments that they'd like to add? No? I, I got a friendly uh, recommendation. If you're looking at these challenges to do with building weight, um, there have been some buildings put up in the industrial park quite recently that have used wood panels. Uh, and I imagine there's a, a weight savings and reduction there. So, yeah. and it would make us very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, I believe I'll just go read through the recommendations and then after the recommendations, I will ask for any discussion before anyone um, uh, suggests a, a recommendation to vote on. So the potential recommendations are A, that the advisory design panel support the project as presented and does not need to see this project returned for further review. B, that the advisory panel supports the project as presented and would like the applicant to work with staff to resolve the following recommendations. C, that the advisory design panel supports the project as presented and would like the applicant to resolve the following recommendations and return to present the revised project to advisory design panel. And D, that the advisory panel does not support the project as presented for the following reasons. Um, is there any discussion first to see if anyone has any stronger feelings than others? Okay, Carlos. Yeah, I, I would I would hesitate to to go the D direction on this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I don't want to see this go back and, and be dead. I just think it, it needs to have a second look at this with some acknowledgement of, of the importance of the site. So I'm I'm leaning towards C so that we can get another crack at it. Um, because I think it is a very important site, but uh, I also hope that staff here is that there's gonna be some encouragement for for them to have some flexibility in a, in a few aspects here with the with the developer because it is it is a constrained site and there are some challenges there. Yeah, my 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 part noted. Sorry, who who was that? Sorry, it's Asia. I'm just going to request that Joe can stop sharing his screen, and then we'll be able to see everybody on the panel if people are making motions. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I think we're still viewing your screen, Craig. Can you I think you are too. It's, uh, it's <laughs> up at the top. There's an orange kind of stops on. There you go. Boom. Oh, I've had it quite a few times recently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just based on Carlos's comments, I, I too personally was between C and D. I just don't know. I don't understand the language personally where it says that it's for C that the advisory design panel supports the project as presented. Uh, there's 
um, yeah, I'm just struggling to see what the what I would support here, other than the fact that we do need this use here. Yeah, I think the, the technology is supportable, but not much else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just just because of its prominence. Um, Asia, would you be able, or Brian, would you be able to maybe clarify if, if it was a D, what is the process comparable to a, a C recommendation? Is it is it a start again, or is it what what happens happens there? Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to jump in, David. Um, I think the difference between C, for both C and D, the application would come back. I think it's just a stronger recommendation that ADP was really dissatisfied with the project. And so there's more, you know, kind of back to the drawing board needed versus C, you know, they might be on the right track, some significant revisions needed. So I think, does that help uh, sort of the difference of C? Yeah, yeah, that's really helpful. Thanks. I mean, again, just, just for me personally, please, anyone else feel free to jump in. But for me, the, the, the building arrangement itself for me needs to be change to meet DPA3 to reduce its monotony. It's not a case of adding some more variation in cladding. So that for me is much more of a kind of, you know, resolve a recommendation. It's kind of a, you know, <laughs> it's a bit of pretty drastic change, but I'll, I'll leave, leave the floor for someone else to speak. If anyone else has any thoughts. I have a, I have a question. Uh, if we go with C, and in our in our recommendation, we you know we 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 discuss the, the length of buildings, the sort of the, the repetition, and so on. Wouldn't they be still addressed? Um, uh, like, wouldn't they have to still? Uh, and this is a question for 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 staff and for David. I guess I understand you're 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 worried, and you want to see the buildings broken up. Physically and not not just the elevation, and I wonder, wouldn't C still uh, satisfy that? I guess I guess it just comes down to an interpretation by the applicant. If it's just a recommendation, they could there it's at their own mercy to proceed with just adding cladding and and coming back. I guess what Asia was maybe referencing is that D gives them a much clearer indication that something radical needs to change, but. I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, Asia. I mean, it's not my field of expertise. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to kind of push in any particular direction. Uh, it's up to the panel to make the call, but I, I think you nailed it, David, and I think that D sends a very clear message, whereas C, um, you'd want to make sure that your recommendations are crystal clear and that we've captured them accurately, that you're expecting still to see significant changes uh, when the development comes back. Mm -hmm. Carlos? I, I yeah, think no, Carlos the, one, yeah. the, the one thing that uh, I just struggle with here, because I have, have been on the other side of this conversation, on the other side of this table, uh, and sometimes, you know, these are, sh are failings of policy. Uh, and policy direction and, and kind of missed opportunities. And so I think one of the questions was asked, like when the applicant came in for this, was there a discussion around rezoning? And, and this is where I wish something occurred that we don't see in this district often, which is kind of an, an upzoning to get to get something that works for everyone and is really a positive for the community. Uh, there does, that doesn't seem to happen here. So I, I have a bit of hesitations in penalizing the applicant to too much of a degree, because in, in some ways they're kind of playing within the the sandbox of a light industrial building. I think, you know, the guy, the, the development permit area guidelines are guidelines. Uh, and so they're, they're not hard rules. Uh, that said, I think we need, we need these rules to apply to this development more. And, and so in, in my mind, and then I'll just finish off this verbal diarrhea and I apologize, but we we've held light industrial buildings in the industrial park that are, you know, a sliver of them are seen from the road to a much higher standard than I think mm -hmm. we're seeing presented in this application. And so, no. therefore, I, I think there's some valid reason to push this further. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Hey, David, uh, considering the constraint on the site being very narrow site and the topography, and I think the layout to some degree more or less can be improved. I suggest 
people will see. Uh, I think it's enough to, to and I mentioned, everybody has mentioned it, it can be done without going to drink and make it. Uh, I agree with you that we need a drastic change, but I think with the same, considering the layout and the uh, size of the site, it can be done with what we recommend as C. That's my suggestion. Yeah, and, and I believe that this conversation itself should show the gravity of our thoughts rather than just imposing a D. And obviously the applicant done, does have the opportunity to represent. And if it's clearly not to our liking again, it will have to go back again, I guess. So the, the applicant will likely take that on, on board. So if someone would like to um, bring a motion forward, anyone? I would go with C. C. So Julian, anyone? Yeah. Can I have some second? Farzan, any oh, any nays? Okay. See it is. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Jessica. If you're if you're still here, um, appreciate all your work. Um, would we like to? I think we've got some pretty extensive notes, unless someone wants to add anything further for our recommendations. I mean, I think it's all fairly along the same track. Anyone extra? Okay. Perfect. Um, that's it. So I guess um, no further ado, uh, if there's no further business, uh, we would just uh, move to terminate the meeting. You can have someone to move. Carlos, second. Brent, perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, we'll see you next week, I think. Yeah, I think we've got a full agenda for next week. Thank you. Thank everybody you. Thank for joining today. Oh, great. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.